Hey, so I wanted to talk about something I think is really funny. Um, I always laugh, literally. Uh, it literally makes me laugh when people talk about how different um, the law of attraction is from Neville Goddard because they're literally talking about the exact same thing. Like there's no difference between the two, no, nothing appreciable. Just minor things that seem to piss people off really badly. And I, want, <laughs> I wanted to talk about one of them um, that uh, I think people misunderstand a lot, the reasoning behind it. And that is um, somehow people seem to have associated Neville Goddard with getting a specific thing, whereas they associate law of attraction teachers with telling you you should go general. Um, I haven't seen that. I'm not really sure where that came from. To me, Neville Goddard is all about um, changing your self-concept, essentially, and then creating the outer effortlessly from the inner. Um, you know, um, he talks about how he met his wife and he wanted her and everything, so everybody points to that as a specific person. In other other um, texts or lectures or whatever, he talks about how he tells women they don't actually want to be married to a specific guy. You know, they want to just be married and then he attends their wedding and they look so sheepish because it's a different guy. You know, um, I don't know. I think everybody is pretty much saying the same exact thing. Um, but I wanted to talk about why I think if you have a specific thing you want, you should also go general. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can do both. And it's actually really, really effective. And it's how I, um, it's clearly to me was a huge part of how my business was successful. And I've, I'll link in the description to the Bridge of Incidents videos I made about my business. But if you, if you look at my story and, you know, if you look at how things started for me, I've talked about how, um, what I really, really wanted was freedom. I really wanted not to have a job. I didn't want to be employed. I had a lot of reasons for that, that aren't very good ones. Um, but you know, when I would go to a job, any job, I would just have this fight or flight reaction. Like I just wanted to flee. Uh, I just didn't, it just isn't for me. Um, I feel like I'm in a cage when I'm at a job. I just do. I always have. So, um, you know, that was a big thing for me. I, that was the main thing for me. I wanted to not have a job. I even tried to be open-minded to the fact that there, like, to the possibility that there could be a job I wouldn't feel that way about. But I was pretty sure early on that having a job was not for me. Um, but if you look at my, um, if you look at my story, um, and you look at, you know, like the first thing I was ever successful at, if I had gotten attached to that specific business in the form it was in, then the whole rest of the story couldn't have taken place because I wouldn't have been open to the bridge of incidents that led me to the final thing that was successful that, you know, gave me the outcome that I was looking for, essentially. And a big part of why that was allowed to happen is because I didn't do that. I didn't get attached to a specific thing. Even when something was working, I intentionally tried to keep my mind out of this is the thing. Like, you know, I just knew that I was going to be successful. I went general with the main um, state, essentially. I am, I don't have to worry about this. Like just that phrase, it's done, I don't have to worry about it, um, you know, was what got me through the entire thing. Every, every moment of doubt, um, every time I didn't know how this was gonna play out, that was always there because in my mind, after reading The Science of Getting Rich, um, you know, I, I knew that I just had to think in the certain way about the outcome of freedom and financial freedom, freedom, time freedom and financial freedom, and that it would happen eventually. I, I felt really sure about that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't worry about it. And, uh, you know, if I had neglected to focus on the, the overall general, uh, I can't imagine how much more stressful the whole thing would have been if it even could have taken place at all, the, the bridge of incidents. Because I went through a lot of different iterations of the current business I have. Plus there was another business thrown in there in the middle um, that was my full-time two. There was another business that was my full-time business for like three years. And then uh, there was a two year period where I didn't, where I, I um, freelanced for my brother and didn't do either of those things. So if I ever got attached to anything, 
specific, you know, this whole series of events that led beautifully to this final thing that ended up working and giving me all of the freedom I could possibly want. I mean, I'm sitting at my kitchen table in the middle of the day making a video. Um, you know, I, I can do whatever I want with my day. I can, I can essentially get as much or as little business as I want. I could take a month off. I did. I took a month off during coronavirus. Um, I have all the freedom I possibly could have wanted. Freedom was a thing I really wanted. And part of freedom for me was also finances. So I really attribute that to the overall sureness of achieving the very broad concepts that I wanted. You know, I didn't try to direct it in a certain way. Um, I didn't try to direct it in a particular way at a particular thing. When I was working on things, I certainly employed a lot of this visualization to it, but there wasn't attachment to that specific thing. Um, how it would have played out if there were, I really don't know, but my speculation is that it wouldn't have flowed the way that it did. Um, because my focus on a specific thing would have impeded the flow of, of all the things happening that I needed to happen in order to eventually lead me to the successful thing. And so I think when you're um, doing anything, when you're, you know, when you're, um, when you're trying to, like for me, I didn't do this with my body, by the way, and it's clear to me that, you know, focusing on the specific, I had a lot of stress and a lot of just strife and bad moments during the um, process of losing 75 pounds. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't focus on, I overall feel good about myself. I didn't do that until December. It wasn't until I, um, you know, used a combination of visualization, identifying with the end state and then brute forcing my way through it. Um, and got to the point where I weighed 115 and was still kind of miserable. Like it, it wasn't until I got to that point that I realized um, I didn't take on the state of being happy with my body. Like that didn't happen. That was missing. You know, if you're, if you have a ways to go in that area, you know, specifically, you know what you want or you think you know what you want, right? You, you want to be at a certain weight or you want to have a certain body fat percentage or you just, you know, whatever your goal is, there's the specific thing that you imagine that you want, but then there's the overall thing that you think that thing is going to give you. And that part is important to also take on, I think, and it makes the whole thing so much easier. Um, what you want from wanting a better body is likely um, a feeling of self-acceptance and acceptance from others and like you're good enough and like you're okay and you know whatever else the things are that you don't feel right now that you think you would feel if you had that. Um, you can both take on the state of that and focus on the thing you're trying to do. As long as you keep the overall state as the main focus, then you can at least keep your mind open to, or you can allow yourself to change your mind about the specific. If you get too focused on the specific, you box yourself into one thing and it becomes like an ego thing where then you have to get that thing and you know that's the only thing that's going to supply you with whatever this feeling is that you want and you get lost in the weeds and you might miss out on a great opportunity or something that might make you happier. And I think this is why the law of attraction, people say go general because that exact thing. But the thing is, you can do both. You don't have to pick one or the other. You don't have to pick a specific thing or a general thing. If you have a specific person that you want, in addition to feeling happy with that person or whatever you do to imagine that person into existence. Um, and I think I, for me personally, since this is the area that gave me the most stress, um, when I had my spiritual awakening in December, I'm not kidding, within 30 seconds, I had already said, the relationship thing is done. I get it. It's done. I am satisfied now, like that is done. I don't ever have to worry about this again. There's no competition. There's no time running out. There's no scarcity. Um, 
I don't need for the entire population of men between the ages of 35 and 45 to be um, available and in good mental health. I need one and needing one thing out of how many thousands and thousands, you know, your rational mind can wrap around that the odds are pretty good for that even if you're not even if you're not employing any kind of mental, you know, influence on the situation. Immediately, immediately, I knew that it was done because I realized that the general was done. Like the overall belief that um, I will be fulfilled romantically was done. It was just done. It's easy to go general. You know, when you don't have beliefs in the way, when you don't have things clouding your judgment, the general is easy. I'm fulfilled. I'm fulfilled romantically. It's easy to for me to feel like what that feels like because I've had it in the past briefly or can easily imagine what's been missing from other relationships being there in future ones. So it's easy to, for me, to take on the state of being fulfilled in general in the romantic relationship area. Um, and then you know, you're also free after you do that, you're free to put it on a specific person. Um, you know, overall, you know that you will be successful romantically. And now you can also focus your intention on a specific person. So all your eggs aren't in one basket, which makes life easier. And which, you know, makes any sort of 3D experience that happens with your specific person that um, seems counter to what, you're, what you want, it makes it feel a lot less um, significant. You know what I mean? If your fulfillment romantically is a done deal, um, then the form in which that comes to you uh, means less. It's that simple. If somebody told you, your ultimate romantic fulfillment is a guarantee. And it, it doesn't matter what form it comes in, it's guaranteed. Then, right, it kind of lowers the importance that's on the specific person that you're trying to manifest. So do both. There's no reason not to. It's a safety net. It's a safeguard, if nothing else. And uh, I don't think any of these new thought people are saying anything different from anyone else. The law of attraction people might say, don't bother going specific. And I'm honestly, I'm inclined to go that route myself because I just think it's so much easier to create from the ether than it is to try to mold something that's already in existence into something else. But even if you have your reasons and they're good ones for why you want a specific person it will help you to overall simply take on the state of being romantically fulfilled in general. Um, there's no downside. So just do both. That's my advice.